What's up guys, it's Will from EDM Tips and we've got yet another Feedback Friday where you guys submitted tracks and my co-coach here at EDM Tips, Neil Erickson, gave live feedback on his Twitch stream. As usual, there were some fantastic tracks from our students and if you want to take part in Feedback Friday and get feedback on your music, then you can join any one of the EDM Tips courses below and then you can submit your tracks to us for live feedback. If you're really serious about your music production and you want in-depth one-on-one feedback each and every week, then check out our eight-week EDM production masterclass. Before we jump in and listen to the tracks that you guys sent over, I've got a brand new track released today. It marks the 10 year anniversary of Applique Records. It's on the Beatport hype charts. And if you want to check it out and give it some love, you can check the link below. Okay, without further ado, let me hand you over to Neil and let's listen to the tracks that you guys have produced. Guys, we got another quality feedback session ahead. Uh, Will and I were talking about it this past week, and we've been kind of floored by the quality of the tracks that you guys have been posting in here. Um, it, it has just, you know, you guys have been showing such a high level of production. The feedback that you guys are dropping on each other's tracks is still top notch. I see, you know, like since this Feedback Friday thread started a while ago in the EDM Tips group, I've been watching a lot of you guys grow, and the, the difference is incredible here. Um, so just want to give you know all of you guys a quick shout out for everyone participating in the Feedback Friday threads, for everyone showing up here. It's all clearly working. Will and I are super impressed, and we just hope that you guys keep it going as strong as you guys are. Also seeing a couple other new people in chat. See, we got Jack Parker and Figure. I'm guessing Figure might be Michael Figgy, but correct me if I'm wrong. What's going on, guys? Thanks very much, Jack. Yeah, nice hat. Absolutely. This is uh, the school I went to, Icon Collective. It is where I learned most of what I learned. Um, huge shout out to them and everything that you know they're doing as a program. It's a nice little, uh, you know, one year long program in Los Angeles. Uh, I went there, worked, you know, nonstop for about a year on music, and then came out uh, the other side an actual musician and stuff. So honestly, we've taken a lot of the lessons that I learned there and boiled them down into the masterclass and put them there. So if you're looking for a like really high, you know, in-depth level of education, don't necessarily have that full year to go to a full program, check out that masterclass, check out some of the other things on the EDM Tips website, because Will and I designed those with this program in mind. So with that, guys, let's get on to the Feedback Friday thread. There are so many good tracks in here, not to mention just so many tracks. So as usual, I'm not entirely sure if we'll get through everything. Hopefully we do, but because there's so many, you know, there's just a limitation of time. I've got the ones queued up first for people that are either new to Feedback Friday or have missed, you know, didn't get, uh, you know, feedback on a previous one of these streams. So with that, you know, we've got probably about like five to ten new submissions, that sort of stuff. And then, you know, we'll start getting through some of the people that have submitted before, gotten some feedback here before too. As always, guys, if your track comes up while we're going through this and there's a certain moment that you want me to be listening to or playing to, just drop it in the chat and I'll skip ahead. Uh, past that, you know, let's just, you know, be active on the chat. Drop some feedback in there. A lot of the people that, you know, have their tracks being played out are in this stream or paying attention right here. So, you know, be active in that chat. Drop them some feedback. Drop them some love when you, you know, when you're digging what they're, what they're uh, putting out here. And I think it should be a great time. So, with that, I will go ahead and switch on over here. Like I said, like we've got a crazy number of submissions this week. We'll just do our best. And actually, one, one quick thing before I get into it. So, we're going to start introducing something super fun on here. So, right now, these feedback streams have been, you know, really core to the EDM Tips group. And we want to keep it that way. But we also want, you know, to start getting word out a little bit. Let other people start to learn from these things. So, to start... At least one time per session here, I'm going to be accepting a submission in the chat. So even if you aren't part of the EDM tips group, even if your music isn't on that Feedback Friday thread and I don't have it queued up here, drop it in the chat. At some point, I'm going to pick one randomly from there and give some, you know, good feedback on it. So, you know, good chance for you to kind of see what the EDM tips fear is a little bit about, you know, what kind of feedback you might be getting if you join in, that sort of stuff. Also, just a good chance to be part of this really awesome community. So as you guys are about to see... Um, we've got some of the, you know, the most helpful, most supportive other producers in this group. Let's just have fun with it again today, guys. I'm going to go ahead and kick it off. off. Up first, we have Bon M or Bo N M with Vibrations. I'm going to go for probably about a minute and a half to two minutes of any given track. Um, just kind of, you know, play through it. I'll be giving some comments. But again, if anything comes to your mind, drop it in that chat and uh, I'm sure they'd love to hear it. So here we go. First one up, Bo N M with Vibrations. Good vibration. 
vibrations indeed, yeah. Great groove on this. I'll skip ahead, see what we can get like a little later on in the track. Really cool textures in here. The biggest thing that I'm noticing right now is that most of the elements in this mix are kind of sitting in the center. I'd love a lot more stereo width across the board to just create a lot more separation, give us this sense of being just swallowed up by the song. A little groove again. So another thing I think that I'd like to hear in this track is a little bit more variation from section to section. Like we're getting that little you know pattern that's repeating in there. Every once in a while, like add a fresh note into that mix to just keep it really unique and new and evolving throughout the track. You're literally doing that right now and this is perfect. This is exactly what I was talking about. We just might want some more of this a little earlier in the track there. Hey. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I completely agree, Ken. Those vocals are really, really cool. Got some awesome effects on it. Maybe throw some reverb and delay on it, like add even more attention to that vocal. See some sound flare, maybe some cymbals at some point. Yeah, I agree. Maybe some like, you know, a nice little ride so that we're getting more than just those closed and half open hi-hats. Um, but let's keep it going here. So up next, we've got Silver Fox with one. Yeah, I've got the fiber internet now. It's crazy. Yeah, so my internet speeds are just amazing. Apparently, now my computer is the one that's having the, the little bit of trouble. So maybe an upgrade on my laptop is uh, is in store for maybe for later this year. But uh, yeah, we, uh, <laughs> we we got what we got for now. So stoked, stoked to at least be uh, making it work here. Um, also seeing a couple of more people that just joined in the chat. What's going on, Fat Freddy, Napster? Um, how you guys doing today? Also see we got Mike McClure in here. All right, so this next one, we got Silver Fox with one. So let's go and hear what we got. Really nice atmosphere right from the beginning. I'd love to hear those drums be a little bit louder in comparison to that that we have this nice sense of depth. Right now, everything kind of sounds far away. I want those drums like right up here and then the atmosphere is way back here. Great groove, awesome delays on those little plucks too. Those sound really nice. Nice, like chords and melodies here too yeah i'd say get that um feedback on on that delay echoing out a little longer during this section like this is the chance to like really let things kind of drag out shine out give us that nice atmospheric texture Completely agreed, Mike. Yeah, awesome stereo movement here. We'll keep this going all the way through the drop, see what we got. little groove and rhythm here one thing i am noticing is that we switched like you know from this really wide stereo image with a lot of nice noise to a much more kind of mono image i think this drop would hit a lot harder if we maintained oh like that string layer that's coming in right now all right like have something like that hit right from the start of the drop or maybe a noise layer something that gives us that little bit of extra width that little bit of extra body and stuff there too and i think that drop is going to hit really strong as a result 
Guys, let's give it up for Silver Fox here with number or with one. Really, really lush, beautiful vibes. I think the biggest thing to focus on is really going to be about that mix, getting it to be really, you know, dynamic in that kind of front to back space. Right now, you've got this lovely atmosphere, but it's kind of all atmosphere. In order for atmosphere to be effective, we need to have things that are like, you know, up front and not the atmosphere for it to stand out against. Really great stuff. If anyone's got any other suggestions for him, let's drop it in the chat. Let's give it up for Silver Fox here um, and keep it going. All right. Quick check, that stream's looking okay for all of you guys. My computer seems to have calmed down and, and things are a little bit smoother on my end, so knock on wood, it stays that way. Awesome, all right. Okay, so up next, we got Rocket Dan with River. I'm fairly certain that Rocket Dan, this is his first submission to Feedback Friday. Uh, so guys, let's all give him lots of love on this. Let's show him what this uh, this Feedback Friday thread is all about. And let's see, <laughs> okay, Jack. Okay, though my hat sometimes seems a bit big. That's just my big ass head, that's all. All right, here we go. <laughs> really, really lush vibes from here. I love this intro. Maybe bring out those atmospheres a little bit more so that they, you know, really envelop us. sense of polyrhythms and groove going on here. So one thing I'm noticing is this like R player that you've got going on has a lot of that detune to it, which is really cool. I love that you've got detune in there, but we need to consider which layer is the one that gets that detune at this moment. So during that same section, you also have this lead that's kind of playing on in that upper like high end. I think that the detune would probably be better suited for that because that's the main melody. That's what people are really going to pay attention to. And that detune creates another layer of interest that draws our ear to that layer. So if we've got it on the background art layer, our ears are then being drawn to the background as opposed to the melody. So I think during that section when that melody is playing, have that detune be on there. And then during this section, Right, there's no melody playing, so you can keep that detune on this particular um, pluck layer. Great groove, I'm definitely dancing in my chair for sure. Maybe try adding some more voices to a lot of those synths to get them to be a little bit thicker, wider, more bodyful there. Awesome. Really beautiful track. I'd say just, you know, on top of what we've talked about, focus on saturating up some of your leads, some of those melodic elements. Let's just get them a little bit more present, a little bit more full in the context of the mix there. All right, great, great track here, Rocket Dan. Welcome to Feedback Friday. Absolutely love the vibes. Stoked to see what else you've got for us, you know, in the future. So keep those coming for sure. Up next, we've got another, I believe, new submission, or at least not in a long time submitter. We've got Chip Miller here with Kiss and Ride. So let's see what we got. Love this pattern, this is really cool. So there's really cool patterns going on in here, and the groove of them is close, but they aren't quite all syncing with that same push and pull. Try maybe just adding a little bit more motion, that push and pull, that groove on your various layers, and I think the drums are going to be your great starting point. So your drums are like perfect as is, let's get everything else like really fitting to that same sort of pattern, that timing that that drum has.
Yeah, completely agree with what uh, Michael and uh, both mics are dropping here in the chat here. Yeah. So let's let's talk about uh, Michael Figgy's uh, comment here a little bit. You know, he's saying that he mentioned that there, he went pretty minimal on the amount of sounds the device is used, um, and then, you know this is pretty interesting, right? And we can listen, and we're hearing, and there's really not a lot going on. There's like the drums, there's that bass line, there's the R player, and then this occasional melody that kind of comes in. Um, and then now we've got kind of this bridge new section and stuff. Let's see. Let's uh, let's keep this going on. We got Chip Miller. Okay, so we just finished this track. I think what I was talking about at this point. Let me just play a little bit, refresh my memory. So yeah, so what I was talking about right before we kind of ended things there was that all of these layers are going in and out of each other. So whether it's through filter automation, the writing, some volume automation, to get a track like this that's pretty simple to work over time, then just you know make sure that you're getting that automation in there, all of that sort of stuff. All right. Great track, really, really cool vibes on here. Definitely gave me some of those Stranger Things, like kind of 80s sort of vibes and stuff to it. So really, really solid selection, really solid, you know, automation and that sort of stuff. Um, the big thing, you know, like I was like saying earlier, you know, a pretty common theme here, saturate those elements to, you know, make them a little bit beefier, particularly on like those big leads. The reason I keep bringing this up is, you know, for those of you that have been tuning into a few of these streams, it's kind of become like, you know, a joke. I always say like, hey, let's make it thicker. Let's make it thicker. It's not that every single music or like every single track out there needs to be thicker. It's that a lot of the songs that you guys are creating are in this kind of like retro wave, synth wave style genre. And then genre is built off of these really old analog synth sounds that are just naturally really full and really thick. But when we put them in the DAW in this electronic format, they kind of lose some of that by default. So we've got to saturate them a ton to kind of make up for that and recreate that same thickness that we're used to hearing from those old analog retro records. So yeah, just lots of saturation, more voices on, on layers, anything to just, you know, create that extra thickness. Now, the other big thing is that we want to make sure that we're not doing this to too many elements because then you're, you know, creating the opposite problem where everything is just a little bit too full and as a result, nothing sounds full. All right, let's keep it going here. Up next, we've got Kid Vite with Here We Go. Um... Let's uh, let's let's see what we got. I believe this one's Dale, so uh, I don't know if you're in the chat here or not, but but let's keep it up. Oh, you know, before we get on, I'm, I'm seeing Soundflare's got a question saying, "How do they lose that thickness by putting them in the DAW?" So the reality is, is just that you know it comes down to the conversion from analog to digital. Analog sounds are made of actual waves, right? Uh, digital is strictly ones and zeros. So when we do that, tra you know, that translation, sometimes it's really really nice. Sometimes we miss out on a little bit of stuff, but mostly, honestly, what I'm referring to here is if we use analog emulated synths and that sort of stuff. So, you know, if you've got any of the Arturia, you know, uh, Key Lab sort of stuff, anything that's built on those analog synths, a lot of the times they've got that core sound in there and it's really nice, but it's not as thick as the full synthesizer ends up being. The reason it's not built into that is because you don't always want that thickness. And if it's built into it by default, it's kind of hard to take out that thickness without like really stripping back the sound. So instead, they kind of opt to leave it a little bit thinner. It gives the producer a little bit more flexibility. And then just, you know, to make sure that you're getting that, that final fullness that would come out of a, you know, a live produced record, we need to add that extra saturation there. Awesome. Okay, cool. So yeah, here we go. Let's... Here we go with here we go. Let's let's do this. Great groove here. Yeah, definitely got some Fisher style groove to it. Ooh, I lo 
love that. But that was really cool, right? We had this big build and this big build and we kept rising in energy and then all of a sudden we get to that what was supposed to be the drop. And instead of getting a drop, he just cut the kick. He cut that kind of low wind. He took away a lot of that bass and it leaves us wanting just so much more. And here it comes. I would love to hear a little bit more volume on that pre-drop kind of transition, that drum fill and that here we go. Ooh, did you guys hear that? That bass line, instead of just doing that center and da, 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 that right before that fill, he went da, da, da. That exact kind of like one moment of little melodic variation is the kind of stuff that I'm talking about that keeps these tracks interesting. Let's rewind and play that again. Right there. Right? It jumps up there and that's super, super cool. Really well done. Let's see what we got kind of going on near the end of the track here. here we, go. we have that new layer that's playing that high end, the da 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 da. This is a great way to add that extra layer of energy and interest to the final drop. So it's not like he's added this whole new melody, this new chord progression, something that's super complex. No, it's just one note that's layered on there and it sustains that same note over the entirety of that drop. Um, but, you know, sorry, with that, you know, because it's got that, you know, that same note, it's not enough to like really draw our ears so much to it that we have to follow it. But it does add that little extra layer of energy that keeps it nice and new. All right, completely agree. I see we also got Alan in the chat here. Awesomeness pumping nicely, completely agreed here. Yeah, absolutely. Great, great track, guys. Let's give it up for Kid Vite. That's Dale here with Here We Go. All right, up next, we've got Artie Fonica. Really cool name. I like this. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, with Tropical Whip, another cool name. Just two, two great names back to back here. I believe this is also a first time if not like a long since uh submitter so this should be a, this should be a new sound to a lot of people here let's see what we got love the foley and the texture you hear that like crowd in the distant background but then also that kind of like outdoorsy textures in there yeah little BG vibes here for sure, Napster, absolutely. Oh, is this uh, this Mike McClure right here? What's up, Mike? I love all the different like little melody lines that you have coming in here. Like different instruments are kind of stealing that spotlight for a brief moment. Yeah, I'd agree with what Jack and uh, what Alan and Jack just kind of dropped in here. I think the atmospheres are a little too loud, um, and I think really it, the instrumentals, like the melodies, the like you know the more important melodic elements, are just a little bit too quiet. We just need a lot more volume on them so that they kind of occupy a similar space as that kick, which admittedly just disappeared. So let me rewind it a little. Like that kick is like right here in the mix and everything else is kind of sitting way back here. So bring those instrumentals right up with that kick and I think you're gonna be good. That, that'll also help put that atmosphere in more of a distant context. Alan's dropping in the chat and Barra starts here. Kick is a little bit harsh, but again, works in the mix if EQ'd. I would completely agree. Take out a little bit of a high end click, maybe end in a little bit more low end boost and you'll be golden. got near the end here. Really great kind of like swing groove in here. 
the da 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 sort of pattern is nice. I like how that, like at the very end, that little percussion layer, that da 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 came in and it echoed the same rhythm and the same groove that we've been hearing in our other layers up to that point. So overall, really, really solid track. I think in particular, like the vibe and the groove of this one is spot on. I think it's really just a matter of mixing this track a little bit further. So getting those background elements, or rather the, the lead elements that are currently in the background, get those up to the foreground, and that'll help just put everything in context a little bit better. All right, let's give it up for Mr. The McClure. This is Mike with Artifonica. Great track. Let's keep it going, guys. Great suggestions in the chat so far, too. I've been seeing a lot of really good ones. Up next, we got Figtronica. I'm pretty sure this one's Michael Figgy here in the chat. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this is yours. So, stoked to, uh, stoked to jump into this one. As always, guys, if your track comes up and you want me to jump ahead to a certain point, just say the word. Here we go. little vibes here. I'm going to boost the volume just a little bit here. Nice little low end. I love this like yeah that deep richness going on here. Definitely some nice and June appeals. I also really dig the quality and the texture of those drums. They're all sitting like really nicely in the mix. They sound, you know, nice and lush, not too piercing, really full. Guys, for those of you listening, Michael is one of our masterclass students. He has been absolutely crushing it in there. So definitely keep an eye on him and his project moving forward here. Maybe get some like atmosphere, some noise kind of building up with this too to help support that rising energy. Oh, that was so nice. Oh, I have to listen to that again. That transition was beautiful. Let's 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 do that again. I love how that reverb and that delay just carries over into that drop. That's flawlessly executed. Well done. I think the next biggest thing that can kind of help this up is going to be from a groove perspective. So if we listen to like where our notes are currently hitting, they're all hitting on the eighth notes. One and two and one and two and one and two and. and there's a couple of small ones in between those, but I think we need to bring those out a little bit more. And then either like with the bass, with the lead, with something else, we need to get some other form of rhythm in there that plays off of a couple of 16th notes, because that's going to be where the majority of like the finer groove, that real danciness comes from. Those eighth notes just kind of give us that rooting spot around those groove points so that we know really what that, you know, the extent of that groove and swing is. saying yeah this was made pre-master class now i love the syncopated synth stuff so yeah this is uh this is a lesson you've already come to learn for sure then michael seeing from alan here saying that you know it feels like the track is a little bit stuck instead of moving forward and i think that is because of this groove right because that groove is very you know static and on the eighth notes there we don't have that chance to really feel that danciness to the extent that it could be and i think with that extra bit of groove in there this track stays refreshing for the entire five minutes awesome one other big thing that you know michael did great on top of those transitions man again that transition was so nice um, just the way elements kind of come in and out throughout this mix. There's a solid evolution in the track right now. Um, so yeah, your instrumentation, the, the general processing, general mix was all, you know, quite solid here. All right, guys, let's give it up for Figtronica here with Could Be. 
Up next, we've got Breslin with song three. Let's see what we got. Taking this volume back down a bit now. Legends never break, they just learn to fight. We'll keep climbing up till we touch the sky. Get some reverb and delay on those vocals, and you're gonna be golden in this section. Higher than the moon, we always rise. Legends never break, they just learn to fight. We'll keep climbing up till we touch the sky. So good use of harmonies here. I will say that the notes that were chosen for those harmonies are giving us what's known as a tritone relationship. So they're playing a note that is five semitones, or sorry, six semitones higher than the other one. And that relationship creates what's known in classical music as is literally called the devil's tone. It's a really tense relationship between two notes that ends up not quite sitting right in, in you know, most Western style music. So on that vocal, I'd say try redoing those harmony lines and pitching it up maybe so that it's a perfect fifth above at all times. That kind of tends to work pretty nicely. Yeah, Dan Westlake saying it used to be illegal. Yeah, that that actual that <laughs> that tone used to be quite literally illegal when writing music. Um, you would get fined, punished, hanging. I don't exactly know what the punishment was. This is back in like the medieval days, so it was probably something real bad. Um, but yeah, something definitely to stay away from. Really cool groove going on here with that vocal and stuff. And I actually really dig that bass line that you had going on in the drop. I'm gonna skip ahead to this next one. Those little da 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 kind of things right in between the kicks, that's perfect. That's exactly what you were, you know, really needing in there. Um, it's got that nice little bounciness, that give and take between that kick and the bass. Really solid job with that. If you want to make that bass line even stronger, throw on a lot of saturation on there. Maybe a little bit of plate reverb to help bring out some of those higher end textures. I know typically, guys, like we say, hey, avoid throwing too much reverb on the bass. For this type of bass line that has a lot of those high end textures, if you send that to a plate reverb and then filter out a lot of the low end, you can get this really nice metallic y kind of like twang and thwack that gets added on to the bass line. So, worth trying out there. All right. <laughs> loving, the, loving the chat going on right now, guys. Keep that up for sure. All right. So, up next, we have got from Dayon Roy with Get Impatient. Let's see what we got here. Um, and really quickly before we move on, question from Michael in the chat saying, but high-end bass is okay, right? Just stay away from the sub. Yes, exactly that. Like very rarely do we want to send that sub to the reverb. Only if we're really intentionally trying to wash things out, muddy things out for that like really crazy effect, but only in that intentional situation. Otherwise, yeah, keep that sub end away from the reverb. It ends up just kind of adding too much mud. It takes away a lot of headroom. It, you know, <clears throat> steals away some of the punch and the power of our track. But yeah, the high-end bass, totally fine. All right, so right now we got, yeah, Dayon Roy with Get Impatient. Let's see what we got. Nice textures right off the bat. I'll say those effects layers, those phasey things are probably a little too loud. I think right now what I'm getting is a little bit of overlap in competing frequencies among these different layers. I'd say either start, you know, get intentional with the EQ, really carve out the stuff that's not needed, or better yet, I would set up some really tight side chaining on your atmospheres so that every time that little bass pluck hits, right, that little thing, it has a chance to cut through the mix just a little bit. So a fast attack and a fast release on that side chain compressor, and that should do the trick. Really strong energy growing here, love this. Love the switch up to the deep vibe here. I think if you really wanna nail this, that kick needs to be equally deep. 
So there's like a little bit of low end there, but most of what I'm hearing with this kick is like that high end kind of click. We need a lot of low end thump, like really big kind of power there. Seeing it from Alan in the chat saying there's too much reverb. I think I would agree. I think specifically with that reverb, it needs to be side chain so that the dryness of those elements still has a chance to cut through. Same thing goes for the delay that's in there. Let's see what we got going on with this next little transition. Awesome little transition. So at this moment, rather than keeping that little plucky bass line going, I would also fade that out and maybe swap it in with a different layer. The reason is, is that bass line has a lot of movement to it. So it maintains a lot of the energy here when the purpose of this section is to actually strip back the energy. So if instead you let that fade out, replace it with another slow moving line, I think you're gonna end up in a really good spot. Like maybe you bring back one of those, you know, slow moving lines from the intro there. Awesome. All right, guys, let's give it up for Dayon Roy with Get Impatient here. Really cool track. If you got any more suggestions, as always, drop it in the chat. Keep on crushing it so far, guys. We've got some really, really strong participation, some phenomenal suggestions, some great little pickups, some good questions. Let's keep this going. Just as a reminder, so I know I've seen some new names in here that weren't in here at the beginning. At some point in here, and actually, let's do this before long. Let's let's make this right now. If you're joining this chat and you didn't have a chance to either submit your track on Feedback Friday in time, or you're just not part of the EDM Tips group, but you still want some feedback, guys. Once per stream, at least to start, I'm going to be doing some live feedback on a random submission. So if you're if you're in this chat, you're wanting to get some you know feedback on one of your tracks, drop that SoundCloud link in the track uh, in the chat, and we'll be sure to get to it. Of course, no pressure too if no one's really feeling it. By all means. We got one from Kenslo. Kenslo will be getting to you. Let's let's get through like one or two more tracks while we got some more people submitting them, and then we'll be tuning into yours. All right. <clears throat> All right. So this next one is with Aztec and Energy here. Love the visuals on this really cool uh, design. This waveform looks nice and fat. I can say uh, say pretty confidently we can, we're going to have a, a nice little hefty drop. Let's see what we got going on here. So right off the bat, this little shaker that's in there isn't quite perfectly aligned with the timing of that kick. So zoom in on that, see if you can't like shuffle that shaker so that it hits a little bit more evenly with that kick. Nice little like deep low bass line here. I think we need a little bit more going on here to like really kind of keep interest. Now, don't get me wrong, the foundation of this is perfect for techno, but on top of that, we need something else, whether it's like a slow evolving atmosphere, a pad, some foley, maybe an occasional hit that delays out, just something to kind of like capture our attention here. Like you've got it coming in right here. Just have that come in a lot earlier and I think you're gonna be golden. Maybe add some other layers to like create that evolution still. Seeing from uh, um, Jono in the chat here, what's up Jono saying, kick too heavy. Uh, not sure if it's too loud or maybe the elements are too low. I would agree, I think that kick's probably a, too, a little too loud for the mix. You could either solve it by bringing everything else up or that kick down. My guess is looking at how big this waveform is, the best thing is going to be to bring that kick down a little and then allow you to bring the rest of the overall song up louder in the mastering stage. So Jackson, you know, kick seems about right to me for the genre. I will say, you know, you are pretty close. I think that the biggest thing is that the top end of that kick is a little bit too high. Yeah, exactly. And you just you just commented that in the chat uh, in the chat there, Jack. Really, really solid job there. Yeah, the high click is just a little bit too loud there. 
Um, seeing Pete asking what is Foley guys Foley is like kind of like real life textures and atmospheres So if you ever hear like, you know The sounds of a forest in a track or some background like crowd noise some chatter all of that sort of stuff is Foley Yeah, we've seen it in the chat here both uh, both Michael figure here and Miles Z just nailing it So on that little vocal chop that just uh, played in right there. Get a lot of reverb and delay on that. That'll help it like, you know, make it very atmospheric, fill in that extra space that we need. Um, seeing a couple of other just like quick questions in the chat here I want to touch on here. Um, so one from little uh, from Mike McClure here saying, question about sidechaining reverb sense. Should you pick a prime instrument to sidechain to? I've been sidechaining to the incoming signal, but everyone else seems to do it differently. Honestly, there, there are a lot of different ways to go about this. And I will say the number one rule, sidechain if you hear something getting in the way of another thing at certain times and not from a frequency perspective, but just for like from an overall like, you know, attention grabbing perspective. So on my return channels, I'll almost always sidechain a little bit to like the kick, to the lead vocal. And then if there are certain like, you know, either rhythmic elements or lead elements that I need to cut through a little bit more, then I can add some ex extra sidechaining to those. The amount that you do it, where you do it, is, is honestly up to your own kind of taste, and it's going to vary so much from mix to mix that I'm, I'm hesitant to just give you general rules beyond that. All right. So I've seen a couple other, you know, small extra, you know, comments in the chat here that I'm going to have to agree with here. So it's some extra reverb and, and you know, delay for, um, you know, Alan saying on, on the, uh, on the, or just in general. Um, Jack is saying, hey, more energy needed on the vocal. Yeah, exactly that. I think that's going to come in, in the form of that delay, maybe just some more volume too. Um, and then Mike, just clarifying point. So multiple stacked sidechain compressor, compressors isn't too weird either. Totally fine, so long as they're not like all constantly pumping. So let's just say you have like five sidechain compressors and they're all kind of switching off when they're enacting. Then you're just going to constantly be pushing down your signal. And at that point, you might as well have just lowered the volume of it. So like there's a, there's a degree of a balance there. Cool. Awesome. All right, let's keep this going. Great track from Aztec here. Now let's go ahead and hit, I've seen a couple of, a couple of uh, tracks here in the chat. Let's go on over to Ken Slow's track here. Let's see what we got. Thanks for chiming in here. Fun. Yeah, let's see what we got, Ken Slow. <laughs> track. Great vibe. Baby, turn the lights out. I just want to get down. Baby, turn the lights out. Good little pumping on there. I think we need a little bit more instrumental volume in that break. Great groove here. I love that like that little pulsing chord. Lovely transition. Long, Seeing from Liquid Snake in the chat, lots of air, plenty of airy atmospheres and nice highs. I completely agree with that. If anything, we actually need a little bit more low end to kind of compensate for that. I think that like that sub end could come up just a tiny bit more, but really the range above the sub end, so like that 100 to 300 hertz, could use a little bit more body in there. Give me a sign of something. Awesome. All right, great track, great vibes. Thanks for dropping that in the chat. I'm seeing a couple of others have you know come through here. Let's uh let, let's keep on poking through. Hopefully we get a chance to get to them, but we'll see. Just want to get a uh, get a little check in here. Seeing from Hima saying, hey, can I request for feedback? So Hima, um, not sure if you were in here at the start. So most of these are going to be coming from yeah that that feedback Friday thread. But I'm taking a couple of submissions. So if you want to drop your link in the chat, 
by all means if we don't get to it this time then just make sure you're swinging back next friday and dropping it in the chat you know kind of near the beginning and i'll be sure to queue that up so up next we've got dj tong key here with angry cat or angry cat angry cat project maybe it's supposed to be angry definitely looks a little bit of an angry cat here let's check out what we got going on <laughs> Really nice reverb on that snare. Love that. Great pumping and side chain movement on that kind of like pad-like atmosphere. I think in the intro I would have loved to hear a little bit more evolution in those like the groove and the patterns really cool but there's nothing for me to like really latch on to here nice little vibes coming in with the, that little art pattern so this piano layer that's coming in kind of sitting in the same frequency space as the other elements of your mix already are. So maybe consider pitching that piano up an octave and seeing how that sounds, or maybe get rid of some of those other low elements during this time. The groove of that vocal is really cool. It's just not quite perfect with it try nudging them off just a little bit to perfectly align with those claps and you're gonna see just a noticeable difference in the movement here Really, really cool track here. Awesome textures, lots of creativity. I think the name of the game here is gonna be the mix. So right now, all of these elements are sitting roughly in that kind of same sense of space from a front to back perspective. Lots of overlap in the frequency spectrum. And as a result, I'm not able to focus on each individual element as much as I want to. So what I would suggest at some times, pick certain elements to add a little bit of automated saturation or volume to. At other times, do it to other ones and like have them kind of exchange in and out with each other so that we constantly have one thing that's super full, but it does switch up over time. Awesome. Really, really cool track. Great vibes. Dubstep still lives on. Absolutely, Jack. Let's keep it going, guys. All right, so we're coming close to time. I'm going to do my best to get through as many of these as we can. Like I said, I know some of these that are kind of coming up are from people that have been in a few of these chats and, or a few of these streams before. So chances are we probably won't get to you today. But rest assured, you guys are going to be right back to the top of the list next time and we'll be good to go then. So right here we've got uh, from, from Cockporn, what a, what a just brutally lovely name there. Um, we've got the kiss here. Let's see what we got going on. like kind of take on this is like a nice little like jazzy sort of lo-fi hybrid retro vibes i think the biggest thing is that all of those elements are kind of sitting again in that same sense of space so getting some side chaining going on between them maybe some volume automation so that they kind of go in and out and our attention's always focused on just one thing i think that's going to be the, the way to go with this yeah exactly what alan just said it's clashing for space Especially those string layers, like they're super rich and full all the way across that stereo field. 
maybe try carving out some of the mids with a mid side EQ or some other sort of stereo imager plugin to like get them even further to the sides so that that middle is really dedicated to the other melodic elements. Nice. All right, let's give it up for the kiss here. And let's keep it going here. So up next, we got Lewis with Shadow and a demo. Lewis is another one of our masterclass students. He has come a super long way since joining us. So huge shouts to everything that he's been doing. He has been putting in the work, putting in the effort. He's getting some really good kind of ravey, high energy vibes. So let's see what we got with Shadow here. There's that Foley, that bird chirping right from the start. Perfect. Get some more reverb and delay on that piano and this is going to sound super epic right now. Nice, I love how you pulled out that mid-range right before that drop. The core, the writing of this is spot on. I think, you know, obviously it's still in the demo stage, you gotta add to it, but reverb and delay. Lots of good energy here, but everything's a little central in the mix. Maybe start spreading out some of those elements. Maybe at that moment, get that snare just going faster. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. Nice little fullness coming in. I think we need a lot more bass in here. Like bring that bass just up in volume a lot. Yeah, with John, oh yeah, more gritty, yeah, more thickness there. Seeing Soundflare saying maybe a different kick, I do kind of agree. I think this current kick is a little bit high end clicky. Let's find one with a little bit more just low end kind of punch and thump that gets you kind of like in the stomach. I think that'll be the, the right kick for this one. The other big thing that I'd like to see is maybe just like some like in the drop when those chord hits when those chords hit, instead of just sustaining them the entire time, maybe you get a degree of a rhythm to it. So it's like, ba, 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 or whatever you come up with, but more than just like that kind of held, da, sort of thing. Seeing some, some concurrence here from Alan, Mr. Embarra starts in the chat here. Yeah, less punch, more thud, Jack is saying. Yeah, I think the thud is the kind of low end. I would still say like punch is going to be important for this one because it's going to be the driving feature and stuff, but it's going to be mid-range punch as opposed to high-end punch, and I think that's a really big um, distinction there. All right, guys, we are coming up close to the end. Let's get one more here maybe, and then I'll jump on over and take one more suggestion from the chat there. So I um, think, who was it that I was chatting with earlier there? Hema97, if you want to drop a link in the, in the chat, by all means, feel free to do so real quick, and we'll, uh, we'll see if we can't get to it. So up here, we got Jack Parker, Vision of You. My, uh, so this is a Jack Parker remix of a Milesy track. So correct me if I'm wrong. So you guys had previously done a collaboration together. Now you're doing a remix of one of his tracks. Is that right? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. So <laughs> super neat way to keep this collaboration, way to keep that, that sort of stuff going on. Let's hear what we got. Jack's another one of our masterclass students who's just been crushing it recently. If you guys remember, um, you know, Jack and Milesy's little collaboration last week. Absolutely dug that. Let's see what we got. I feel the night by my side. Great use of reverb and delay. Terrifying embers, but also soft and tender. Definitely check out Milesy Music SoundCloud. Hey, if you want to drop a SoundCloud link in the chat, Adam, so that we can get to it, by all means do. Groove. There we go.
Get that bass line a lot thicker, a lot louder, get some width on it, make that be huge at this moment, like steal the listener's attention. There's just a couple of those bass line hits that are hitting like a fraction too early. It sounds like they're kind of like hitting on the grid relative to that kick. Like maybe just nudge them a little bit back and you'll be good. So soft and Love that little background lead. It does get a little bit muddy here, so maybe control that reverb back a little bit during this time. Also rough not at it. Yeah, so if it's not finished, totally fair. Yeah, I'm touching on some finer details here. At this moment, I would cut that atmosphere out. Like, let's get rid of that atmosphere, go back to the kind of groove and the tightness of the beat there. And then maybe at the end of the section, you start bringing it back in. So in times like this, where you have a lot of things going on in the mix, this is where we want that volume automation among different elements so that we're kind of like, we know exactly which one we should be paying attention to. To be fair to Jack, this is just one day's work. This is amazing for just one day's work. Way to get it going on. Absolutely. Check the breakdown at about 2 minutes 40 seconds if we can. Let's see it. See what we got. Love the vibe. Love that rhythm that you have going on. like a lighter they can pass through the screen here or something, right? I can't not do this. Beautiful, absolutely love this. This will be the final one for this week's Feedback Friday. Let's get into it for this. Let's see what we got. Tiny little tonal riser in with this too. Like sort of thing would be dope. Sorry about the drop coming. All right, prepare yourself. <laughs> good groove, good groove. Just get chords in there, and honestly, you're gonna be you're gonna be hitting it. Jack, yeah, you already know it. That chord, you're just not done with this one yet. But yeah, that thing, just get those chords, get that fullness in there. That build could not be more epic. So just like make sure you're answering it when that time comes for sure. Great drums here. Awesome. All right. Guys, if you're in this chat, check out Milesy. He just dropped his link here for Milesy Music. This is his original. If you like that song, definitely go check out what he's got. I'm queuing it up here for those of you just watching the recording who don't have access. You've got, yeah, up here's that link. Milesy Musician set slash vision of you. So go check that out. Huge shout out to you guys collaborating once again. I absolutely love that you guys have been doing this. And please, by all means, keep it up. With that, everyone, we're going to go ahead and call it a wrap on this week's Feedback Friday. Once again, it has been such a blast interacting with you guys, listening to these tracks. It's always a source of inspiration. I just have a blast listening to it. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here laughing my ass off half the time at the things you guys are dropping in the chat. Really inspiring stuff. So keep it going. Keep up the hard work this weekend. Guys, I hope to see you guys around next week. And again, if you guys are you know time or tuning in for the first time here, you're interested in you know taking part in this, drop your tracks in that EDM Tips uh, group, the Feedback Friday thread, or starting like I said, starting next week and kind of moving on, I'm gonna start taking a couple of submissions in the chat every single week. So if you're you know if you're tuning in, you're kind of new to this community, would love to see you back. Just make sure you subscribe to that Twitch channel so that you guys can see when we'll be going live. If I ever throw on these special events like Beat Labs and stuff like that. 
It's going to continue to be a blast, guys. I have nothing but just some awesome plans in store for, for what we've got going on here. Thanks once again, everyone. Hope you guys have a wonderful Friday, a wonderful rest of your weekend, and I'll see you guys later. Cheers, everyone.